Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about conditions and comparison operators. Now these are extremely important. This is kind of the foundation of the next like five or six lessons that we're going to go through. So really I uh, kind of encourage you guys, if you haven't been watching the entire videos, maybe now is the time to start and make sure you really understand this before moving forward. Otherwise things are going to be a bit more difficult. So I want to refresh you that we started talking about data types in a few videos ago and we mentioned the data type called Boolean. Now we said that we could have that uh, data type called Boolean, let me just say B here, and that value could either be true or that value could be false. And remember that we can't have that capital false or that capital two, it's only those two special values. But what are the point of those values and where do we actually use them? Well, this is where I'm going to show you how these are used or how these are actually generated. So let me create some variables. I'm going to say x equals 8 and var y equals 9, just like we used in some previous videos. Now, a lot of times when we're doing some computations or we're adding numbers, we're doing something, we need to do some kind of comparisons. Maybe we want to see if the value of 8 is greater than the value of 9 or if you know 8 minus 9 gives us enough a remainder and if we're looking at like a shopping cart and we see if they have over $100 in the shopping cart then maybe they get a discount on their order there's lots of instances where we need to do comparisons with numbers and I'm going to show you guys how we can do that now typically we're doing comparisons between variables but sometimes it can be between constant values as well and what I mean by constant value is just if I type in some number rather than actually using two variables so let's start by going through some of the comparison operators which are what I'm going to show you now okay so the first comparison operator is the less than sign now a lot of people will say oh no that's a greater than sign it's not the less than sign it really matters in which way this is pointing related to your variables in this instance what we're saying is x less than y that's what this statement means but if i decide to put a sign like this then we could read it like is x greater than y or is y less than x right it doesn't matter if none of these are really the greater than sign or less than sign it really matters what way we put them so we have these two signs greater than less than and we also have the ability to add an equal sign to the end of either of these two signs now this is going to change this comparison to say rather than less than y or greater than y in this case going to say is x greater than or equal to y now notice that i keep saying is x greater than or equal to y or is y less than or equal to x or whatever it is that's because this statement or this expression that I've typed here is actually going to return to me a Boolean value, which is true or which is false. And that true or false is going to tell me the answer to this expression that I've put here. Now, I know some of you might be a little bit confused, but I will. I don't know how I just did that. Log out my answer and show you what I mean by that. All right. So let's refresh this and you can see we get a value of false. And why do we get a value of false? Well, because X is not greater than or equal to Y. So when this expression is evaluated, this comparison happens between eight and nine, and we get the value false. Now, if I decide to reverse these signs like this, you can see we get the value of true. And if I decide to change maybe X to say 11 instead of nine, and we refresh this, now we're back down to false. And that is precisely how these basic comparisons work. So these less than, greater than, or equal. Now it's important you cannot do something like equal than, greater than. Um, this is a different statement. You can see it's just changed colors completely when I do something like that. So make sure you add the equal sign after that comparison operator. All right, so the next operator to talk about is actually the equivalence operator, which is the equal to, or the two equal sign. So is equal to is what we call this. Now notice that this is two equal signs and not one equal sign. Now one equal sign is what we call the assignment operator. And that is assigning some value to a variable, right? That's typically what we're doing with the assignment operator. Whereas with these two equal signs, what we're doing is checking for equivalence. Now there is another operator which is the three equal signs, which stands for is equal to value and is equal to type. Now I'm not going to explain really how this works in difference with the two equal signs because it's kind of hard to understand until you get into objects and some more advanced data types. So we'll talk about it as we go through later. But for now, just understand that you can use the two equal signs or the three equal signs and 99.9% .9 of the time, these are going to do the same thing and they're going to achieve whatever you know functionality is you're trying to get at. Now, equal then, equal then. So this is just going to compare if these two values are the same. So obviously in this case, 11 is not equal to nine. So let's do this comparison and we can see we get the value false. However, if I were to change my value Y 
to be 11 and we do this comparison we get true and just notice if i add a third equal sign like this we get true as well now if you're in doubt and you're like well do i use two or do i use three just use three it's that we'll explain why later but just use three now let me do something I'm going to change this to 11. I'm actually going to try to demonstrate the difference because I feel like it's important enough to try. Uh, we have this variable X, which is 11, and we have this variable Y. Now, notice that 11 and 11 are the same, right? Like if we're looking at this as humans, we see 11, we see 11. We're like, okay, those are the same value. So this should evaluate to true. But watch what happens when I run this. We actually get the value false. Now, why do we get the value false? Well, this 11 is different from this 11 because they're different types. This is a number and this is a string. And remember that now if we try to do something like X plus Y, well, this is a string and this is a number. So what happens when we add a string and a number? Well, we convert the other number to a string. So in this case, this is now going to turn into the string 11 and we mush them together. We don't actually compare, do a logical um, addition there. We just add these numbers together. So rather than getting 22, which we might have expected, you can see here we're getting 1111. So that's important to understand. Okay, so let's do these two equal signs now. All right, so what happens when I do two equal signs and I compare these? Well, we actually get the value of true. So why did that work? Well, that worked because this two equal signs compares the value and does not look at the type. Whereas the three equal signs compares the difference in the type and the value. And only if both of these are the same, will we get that equal then. All right, awesome. So now what I'm going to show you is kind of the opposite to this, which is the not equal to. Now, there is a not equal to and there's a not equal to <laughs> equal to, which is the uh, two equal signs like that. So we'll talk about both. So let's start by doing not equal to. So exclamation point equal sign. What does this do? Well, it literally just gives you the opposite result that you would get if you did two equal signs. So here, since these values actually are the same, what I'm getting is the answer false. The reason I'm getting the answer false is because this operator is going to tell me if X is not equal to Y. And in this instance, it is equal to Y. So obviously this condition is false. And all of these that I'm typing here are known as conditions. So that's important to understand. Now, what happens if I add a third equal sign like that? Well, let's run this. We get the value true. Why do we get the value true? Because obviously 11 and 11 when we're doing three equal sign comparison are not the same because this is a string and this is a number. So when we do this, we get false or sorry, what am I saying? We get true because these are not actually the same values. And that's kind of how that works. Now let's just do another basic example with nine. And you know, if we do X um, not equal equal to, we still get true because obviously these aren't the same. But if I were to change this to 11, then we still, you know, we get false because these are actually the same value. Now that is kind of the basics of the basic comparison operators. Now I'm going to show you how we can actually chain these together and use something called and or and not. Now, and or and not are very powerful and they allow us to kind of create some more complicated conditions. So I'm going to do a more advanced example now just because numbers are really easy to understand typically. So I'm going to say var name equals Tim and I'm going to say var other underscore name equals Tim. All right, so let's do a comparison of these. So what I'm going to do is simply log out if name is equal to equal to other underscore name. Well, what do you guys think looking at this? Do we think they're the same? Do we think they're different? Does this two equal sign, is it going to make a difference if we use two or three? What do you think? Well, let's run this and have a look. We get the value false. Why do we get the value false? Because there is a capital here and capitals actually make a big difference when we're doing comparisons. This Tim is not the same as this Tim. They're different strings. However, if I do change this to be like that, now we'll get the value true. Okay. So that's great. We've done those comparisons. Now, what I'm going to do is actually add some other variables. So we'll say, yeah, well, you know, we'll add some more numbers here. Var x equals 10, var y equals 9. Now, what if I want to print if name is equal to other name and another condition is true? What if I want to chain multiple things together and see if those two things are true? Well, what I can do is actually use what's called the and operator or the and kind of comparison chain or whatever you want to call this. Now, this is what this looks like two and signs. These are above the what key is it on your keyboard, uh, the seven key on your keyboard. And what this is actually going to do is compare both of these conditions together and see if they're both true. Now I'm going to add another condition here where I'm going to say X is or I'll say Y actually is less than X. 
So what this and does is it starts by evaluating the condition on the left side, which in this case is name equal equal to other name. We know that this is true, right? Above here, this value is true. Then what it's going to do is see if this one is true as well. So if y is less than x. Now, if both of these conditions are true, and only if both of these conditions are true, this whole thing that we've typed here will evaluate to true. If one of them are false, or both of them are false, it doesn't matter which one, or if both of them are false, then we're going to get a false value. So let's uh, refresh this here. And we can see we get the value true, because we know that this is true. And this is true. But what if I do y is greater than x? Well, obviously, we know this is true. But we know that this is false. And since this is the and kind of chain comparison, I don't know the actual proper name for it, we're going to get the value false. And we can see that here. So this and checks if condition one and condition two are true. And we can go through and we can do as many ands, chain them together as we'd like. And we can do, you know, seven equals equals nine. Like we can add that at the end here. And obviously, we're going to continue to get false. And what's going to happen here now is we're going to check if this and this and true and this is are true. And if all three of those are true, will be true. Otherwise, if any one of them are false, or any combination of them are false, we will get the value false. Alright, the next one we need to talk about is or. So let's change this to or now or is simply two straight lines, I think you call this the pipe, but I don't actually know the proper um, name for this character, but it is uh, where is it exactly? It's kind of underneath the backspace character on your keyboard. Anyways, the or is a little bit different than and what or is going to do is a similar thing. It's going to look at the condition on the left. It's going to look at the condition on the right. And if either of them are true, or both of them are true, it's going to give us a true value. So in this case, we know that this is false, y is greater than x, but we know that this is true. So if we run this, we can see Hey, what am I getting here? Name equals equals other name or y greater than x. That should be giving me true. Sorry, I don't know why that wasn't refreshing. Anyways, there we go. True. Now, what if I change this to be a not equal equal to then? Obviously, we know that this is going to be false and this is going to be false. So what is the or going to give us? It's going to give us a value of false because, well, neither one of these are true. But if I change this now to be y greater than x, um, actually, sorry, it should be y less than x, my bad. And we refresh this, we can see we get the value true. So that is how the or works. Now we can combine ors and ands together. So we can do, you know, um, another and sign here, and we can add, I don't know, something like eight, equal equal to eight, and we can chain all of these together. And what's going to happen here? Well, let's run this, we get the value true. And the way that we do this is we simply read left to right. So if we're going to combine all of this, it's kind of complicated sometimes to understand how we're actually doing this. What we're going to do is compare name and other we're going to get some value, let's say obviously this is false. Now what we're going to do is say false, or what's this value? Well, this value is going to be true. So this whole thing here, if we're comparing with or is going to be true like that, then we have this and where we're comparing with here, which is going to be true true and true returns to us a true value. And that's how we get that. Now what I'm going to show you finally is just a not and then I'll do a big chain of all of them together. And I know this video has been long, but I wanted to show you guys all of this in one video. So what I'm going to do is simply show you the not operator, which is an exclamation point. All this does is simply reverse whatever the current thing is that you have. So if you have true and you put a not on it, it gives you false. If you have false and you put a not on it, it gives you true like that. And that's as easy as it is. And this works in any condition. So in this case, if I do something like x less than y, well, we know that x is not less than y. So this is false. But since we have a not outside of it, and these brackets around this condition, well, what I'm going to get is the value of true. And this is what I wanted to show you as well, we can chain conditionals by using these brackets. So let's do not x uh, and y or name equals equals other underscore name. Uh, and uh, let's do something like nine greater than zero. So what I've done now is chain these together. What I can actually do is put these in brackets if I wanted to and do something like a not sign here in front of this. And now what's going to happen is we're going to evaluate this expression, get the not of it, we're going to evaluate this expression, this expression, we're going to and them together. Uh, I think I might need another bracket at the end here. Uh, I think that's right. Yes. Okay, that is right. Then we're going to not them, then we're going to do the or of this side and this side and see what that result is. I'm too lazy to calculate it. So let's just refresh. 
and that value is staying true. So that is how that works. This is our comparison operators. This is how we combine them. So or and and remember, or either one of them needs to be true or both of them can be true. And uh, if we have that, we need both conditions to be true. And if we have a not, that's simply going to reverse whatever it is that we have with those combinations of operators, we can create any kind of conditions that we would like. And that has been it for this video. As always, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in another JavaScript tutorial.